Welcome to One Insight. My name is Rich Litvin. I grew up in London and I now live in LA. And this is a podcast for extraordinary top performers and their coaches. You see, I've coached some of the most successful and talented people on the planet. I can see what most people cannot see. And I dare to say what most people wouldn't dare to say. And what I know about success is that on the other side of it, it can be incredibly lonely. You can feel more of an imposter the more successful you become. And when you're the most interesting person in the room, you're actually in the wrong room. Clients who are more successful, more intelligent and wealthier than you need your support more than they know and more than you can imagine. I coach around insight. Life looks one way, something happens and the world looks different and your entire world changes. It can happen in an instant. And this podcast is called One Insight because a single insight can change everything. You're about to hear me work with Patty Ivey. Patty was an entrepreneur in her blood from a young age, very successful entrepreneur. She transitioned into the world of yoga, became hugely successful with numerous yoga studios, transitioned out of that into coaching, works with fascinating clients. And we have an interesting conversation. She, she asks me about how do I differentiate between doing and being and why being is so powerful when we're working with clients. And I, and I, I tried to come in with a, an answer to her question. But she kind of pushes me out because she has, has her own answer. And then she answers a different question. And I, I try and answer and I'm pushed out again. And I'm intrigued. I'm watching what's happening and I'm curious. Why is this happening this way? And there comes a moment later on the call in the conversation when I catch what's been happening. Actually, what Patty's wondering is, will people pay to do this work with her on being? Because she's an entrepreneur. This is not a nonprofit. She wants to make a difference to people's lives and be paid handsomely while doing it. And I love that. But it took a while to get to the question. And the fact that I didn't get defensive, didn't need to, when she pushed back and had answers constantly, that I stayed there with her side by side, shoulder to shoulder with her, allowed me to get to that place, to get that insight. Oh, I see what you're asking. And we got to the end of the call and it dawned on me. Patty always pulls a card from an oracle deck um, or even a tarot deck when we're in our conversations together. That's her world. And I just happen to have a deck of spirit cards sitting on my desk today. So I tell her, I think this is how we need to end, that I pull a card for you. And she tells me how to do it. And then I'll let you get to the end and watch what happens as we get to the end of the conversation and how I land the plane around being at the end of this coaching experience. All right. This one was really fun for me. Enjoy. Hi, Patty. Good to see you. Hi, Rich. Good to see you too. So Patty and I have worked together. We've worked together one-on-one. Patty's now a member of 4PC. You're, you're a powerful coach in the world. You work with people on transformation, but you've been in the transformation game for a long time. It didn't always look like a coaching transformation. Tell me about the transformation game that you've been in, Patty. Yeah, I think, you know, um, I've always been a natural visionary entrepreneur. And so that just by the nature of itself is transformational. You know, I've always been that person where I never came at anything of like, oh, I want to start a business. I just wanted to change the world. And uh, so that has been who I've been. And I just go out and, you know, I'll see something. I'm like, oh, I could do that if I think it could have impact. And it it has to, I have to feel passionate about it, obviously. Mm -hmm. And so that is um, how I've always been from the time I was young. And I think that the biggest transformation, you know, I think in my life, what has happened with me is that there's always these sort of something I'll hear or something will grab my ear, you know, as an interest, and it'll bring me into a new level of inquiry, which, which then leads me to what's next for me. In what transformation looks like. So that's, you know, that's an interesting way to live because I don't know when it's going to hit. It just hits. And so I'm a bit of a, what I'd say a loose cannon in the world of being a visionary is um, something will spark me and I'm just off to the races with it. So the biggest jump was from doing other visionary things. And and mostly, as you know, in the um, brick and mortar uh, game. 
And the one that really grabbed me was when I uh, got into the yoga industry. Mm-hmm. And, and I don't even consider it to be the yoga industry anymore. It really is a world of transformation for me. But I did have impact on a, you know, a, um, a business perspective in the world of uh, what yoga was when I got into it and how small the business was and how large it became by, um, by the nature of who I became inside of that. So you're, you're being very discreet. Let me, let me uh, okay. <laughs> tell you what, here's what I hear and see. Um, entrepreneurship, I love that distinction. Entrepreneurship is transformation. That's a great insight, actually. Um, you were on, a born in the wool entrepreneur, but you waited for inspiration. When inspiration struck, you ran. Whether yeah. it was a company selling cookies or ultimately uh, taking that level of transformation entrepreneurship to the world of yoga, you've always been successful in whatever you've done. Yes. And at this moment in your life and career, it's helping other people make that transformation. That's what you love, what's light, lights you up. We call it coaching, but it's transformation is helping other people transform and see what they the difference they can make in the world. Because making a difference in the world has always driven you. Absolutely. And I, I was that kid, I, you know, I swear I came out of the womb saying, oh, I can do that. And I would yes. just do it. Yeah. And, yeah. I have every, every, about once or twice a year, I get a client who has that spirit. And it's really fun to coach them because all I have to say is, I don't think you could ever do this. And they go, I'll show you. <laughs> and then they come back and they've done it. <laughs> exactly. So let me ask you, with that spirit of fun, what would make this conversation really special for you today? I think what would be really fun for me is uh, as I'm moving on and what I'm interested in next, which has been the next level up of going from being a master at doing to a master of being. Mm. I think there's a lot of, of exciting stuff inside of that, not just for me. But how can I bring that into the world of coaching? Because that's what really excites me. Mm. Well, it's very interesting the way you word the question. So, so there's a if there was a theme tune <clears throat> to 4PC, to my community of talented, driven, high-performing individuals that you're now part, now part of, the theme tune would be dooby dooby doo. Because we're always playing with that intersection between the doing and the being. Um, Out in the world, most mastermind groups are about doing. How can you do more, do differently, uh, learn more? And there's a place for that. It's usually what got us to where we are today. We read more than other people. We learned more than other people. We learned from others. We learned by making our own mistakes, combination of the above. We're in the doing world. But what really makes a difference is shifting who you be, how you show up in the world. And the question you ask, it sounds to my ears like, how do I get better at being? Well, let me rephrase the question. Not how do I get better at being, because I'm in that process already. And one of Mm -hmm. the things that I realized about myself very recently and i think even coming home more from when we were in italy is that no one can teach me how to be yeah. that's my that's my journey and you know you know this about me i have one tattoo and it says seeker of truth and um that really is who i am a seeker of truth which is really my own personal inquiry about who i'm being in the world So the question I'm asking is, how do I uh, work with others to spark their interest in tapping into the same? Because I think the conversation between doing and being is out of balance. Nice. I like that distinction. So it's more about how do you you work with others on this than than yourself because you're in it. Um, When you talk about Italy, that was the retreat we just went on with 4PC, and it was very experiential. I couldn't have described it up front. I can't describe it afterwards. We we played a murder mystery game, which (laughs) many people listening might have played. You could buy them off the shelf uh, in in the store. But this was a murder mystery in service of transformation. So the person who curated it for us 
spent weeks learning about each member in the group, trying to craft a character designed to tap into our fears, our doubts, our insecurities, our desires. And we would watch what happened as we showed up. There's a member of the group to make it real who has been masterful at being in the moment. Uh, he he's, uh, doesn't like to plan anything. It's helped him have a, a career, very successful career in all sorts of ways. And he decided he was going to play that way in the game. Everyone else, the rest of us, we were reading our characters. We were learning about them for weeks before. He shows up and he's in the moment. I haven't learned my script. I'm going to, this is how I play. This is how I'm successful in life. And it triggered him completely because we kept going up to him, asking him questions and he couldn't answer them. And it was a great example for, for his story of his way of being has got him to where he is today. It's not going to get into where he needs to go next. So one of the ways that you can do this with your clients is to have them start to look at who they be now. How do they show up in the world? Well, I'm going to present a different question to you because I agree mm -hmm. with you. I agree with you on that and I hear what you're saying. And I still believe that that approach can pull people back into the doing, how to be while doing. And I really want people to start looking at a bigger umbrella over and above all of that with who they're being as uh, humans in the world and um, being of service. I think being of service is very tricky because I think it's easy for us to say that we're being of service and there's always a catch where it's about us. And that's where I caught myself. And so I'll share just a little story if I may. Uh, when my dad was dying, I went to see him and I had, you know, my four yoga studios going on and all these other things happening. And I was almost annoyed that what was going on with him was interrupting what I needed to do in my life. And that's when it really struck me like, what the hell am I doing? This is my dad. This is my dad, and I'm seeing this as an inconvenience. And in that moment, I just put somebody else in charge of, of running operations for my company, and I went and I stayed with my dad for a period of time. And I would just sit and hold his hand, and I just asked him questions about his life. And it was the first time, Rich, in my life that I realized that that was really to me being of service, like no agenda. Like I was there for him, serving him in the moment. And in all of the transformational work that I've done throughout the years, the transformational work in some way, there was a payoff for me. And there's nothing wrong with that. I want the payoff, right? I want to be able to make money. I, I, I deserve, you know, we all deserve to earn money. It doesn't matter if you're a healer or who you are. What I, what I'm interested in though, is, um, helping people see that there's a better way of doing that where they're not so hooked into what their payoff is that to understand that there's a natural flow to when you're in the right stream what you deserve will come more naturally when you're when you're really giving from a deeper place of service. So I, I hear you now talking about something that's, that's powerful and distinct from what you mentioned earlier. Because where I was beginning to go is, how do you help someone understand being? You have them look at themselves in a mirror on a regular basis. How am I being? How am I showing up? What you're talking about now is... How do they be of service, particularly of service? Well, I see them as the same thing. Like I see walking the earth being of service, right? We come out, you know, you and I ta have talked about before of like there's, uh, there's a mission, right? Like people have a mission, but I look at it in two different ways. You can, you can make a promise to the world which to me is different than a mission because we can have a lot of different missions. I've had a lot of different missions in the things that I've done, 
But the bigger promise that I made to the world was to be of a contribution and to be up to something bigger than myself. So how do we put that in the background of, of people who are high performers? Because high performers, we tend to just get hooked into the, the bigger thing of doing. So it sounds like you've done a lot of reflection on this. What, what's your answer to the question you have? Well, when I look at life, I like to take a step back and say, all right, like a, you know, if I think about a camera, right, we zoom out and we zoom in and we zoom out into the bigger picture of living and then we zoom into the details of things. And I think that's important because when we get very hyper-focused, we can lose sight of bigger life and spiritual principles. And I think it's really important that we stay tied into all of that because it has an impact on all things, on our health, on the energetics of how we're moving through the world, how we're treating people, not even um, intentionally. A lot of times we're just moving so fast, high performers, that we don't even get to see um, everyone that we're knocking down along the way. And, and so... I'm interested in stepping into an area of coaching where there is a reflection on and a looking at, yeah, be the high performer, do amazing things in the world. We need all of that. But how do we do it with more thoughtfulness, consciousness, and, and awareness around it that keeps um, humanity in good shape? I think that's a great question to live into. It sounds like the clients who you're drawn to and are drawn to you are high performers making a difference in the world. And the question you want to ask is, how can you help them do that with more thoughtfulness, more consciousness, and more awareness? Yes. And then the bigger question is, what would that look like on a one-on-one -on -one client, on programs that I do, on... I, I guess the bigger question is, are people actually willing to pay for that level, right? Because when you talk about working with high performers and it's tip, a lot of it has to do with the businesses that they're building, all of that, right? And there's uh, there's got to be a financial payoff. Do you believe that people are actually interested in what I'm talking about? Okay. So this is interesting because the conversation so far has been interesting for me because each time you've asked a question, I've answered it from my heart, from my head, wherever it's come from, and then you've had a different take on it. And so it feels like I've tried to come in here, <laughs> there's no space. I've tried to come in here, there's no space. Try to come in here. I'm okay with that. It wasn't didn't feel like adversarial or anything, but there was no space. Where we just got to is what I think might be driving all the questions, which is why you don't need my input. You've got your own answers. The real question is, you want to make a difference in the world and be paid for it. Are people willing to pay for the thing that inspires you and lights you up? Yes. Okay. Let me tell you a quick story. A friend of mine was dating and he went to a party and a girl came up to him and started talking to him, woman. And he said, look, I've got to be honest with you. I'm only really interested in two things, sex and God. And she went, oh my God, me too. 99% <laughs> of the people he might've asked that to, said that to, would have said, oh, thanks a lot. <laughs> I'll see you around. We find our people. So are there people willing to pay a lot of money to be in this transformation game, to make a difference in the world while being more thoughtful and having more awareness? I believe so. I think you're one of them and you've paid significant money to work with me over the years and your dream clients are a reflection of you. So my simple answer to that question, yeah, there are people like that. Where do you find them? Who are they? Different question. But I've got no doubt there are people like that. I'm, I work with them all the time. Well, I also think though that I can find myself sitting in a group and I feel like sometimes that there are conversations that are being missed because as high performers, again, we get stuck in a certain way of interacting with each other. 
And I want to break through that. So you need another tattoo. <laughs> another tattoo. Well, I've got three it, lined up, by the way. <laughs> it says seeker of truth on one arm, correct? Yes. It needs teller of truth on another. Because you're not just a seeker of truth. At this moment in your life, career, you're someone who wants to speak truth. Uh, people get to decide if it's their truth or not. Yeah, I know you're not attached to that but you're a woman who has deep truths and you want to speak them into the world and it's time. Your truths are needed, Patty. Your people will love them. If they're not your people, they won't want them. Well, I've always been a truth teller. That, that part's not a problem, <laughs> telling the truth. It's, it's, so what's the worry? The, the, the rooms that you're in, what's the worry? I wouldn't call it a worry. I think that I'm uh, still sitting with um, I'm still sitting with at times feeling like no matter where I go, even in a room of high performers, that I don't relate because I think differently, or maybe I just think I think differently. Mm. You know? I think both. I think both. In my experience of you in our most recent retreat in Italy, I could see how you think differently. And I love that. I, I filter for, di for diversity in 4PC and diversity of thought is something people often miss when they're thinking about diversity. I love that you think differently. And sometimes I watch how you think that your thinking differently makes you different from us. And <laughs> yeah. it doesn't necessarily. And so they're different. They're, they're separate things. I think actually thinking differently in a, in a community of talented individuals makes you closer to them than you think. The fact that you have a different idea to them or you want to challenge them over here is neither here nor there. That, that's exciting to, to uh, interesting people. Yeah, I think that was actually one of my takeaways coming back was that, oh, you just think you're different than all. Yeah, you do think differently, but that doesn't mean you don't fit in here. I really yeah. got that. And and I think that that's a, uh, a, a part two of... Uh, you know, my leadership development is what I would say is like an emotional leadership development that it's like, oh, this is who I am and say what I have to say, be okay with thinking differently and then standing really firmly in that. Mm -hmm. I, I, I really, I took that home and that was great for me. So um, I would, you know, like that's something that's of interest to me down the road is, is being that kind of a contribution, even at 4PC of like, well, what can I present that brings in a different lens of how I look at the world? With you you may have heard me say before, my favorite book on leadership is called First Break All the Rules. One of the things I say to members of 4PC when they come in, it's a Brene Brown distinction. I say, um, don't try to fit in. Know that you belong. When you try and fit in, you're going to listen for how do we talk, what do we speak about, what are our distinctions, what are our, what's our language, and you'll try, try your best. And in three, four, five years, everyone in 4PC will look, sound the same, and that will bore the shit out of me. So I'm really clear, You've, you already belong. So if you have a way of speaking in the world, speak that way. If you want to provoke us, provoke us. If you want to play, play. If you want to be serious, be serious. B bring your own magic into that room. I, I crave that because I'm creating a community that grows over time, that doesn't shrink over time. So well, I, love, I, don't, I love hearing that. Yeah. 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 So we don't have to have an answer to that question right now, but what could I bring to 4PC lights me up. It gets me excited. I, I did a podcast episode with, um, recorded one this morning with uh, Rita. And Rita works with women um, who are making a real difference in the world. And I gave her a challenge to look at how she does that, how she helps these women leaders make this difference, be on purpose, have nothing stop them. The way that nothing stopped her when her, her son got this diagnosis, he was going to die. And for 20 years, she fought for him. Um, and he, and he, was, he lived for a significant time. Uh, how does she do that? And so this is what we call in 4PC, becoming a student of your own mastery. 4PC is not about me teaching you how I do things. 4PC is about helping you see how you do things. Where's your magic in the world?
And so that's what you're, that's that, and that's how you lean into being too, because how am I being? How am I showing up? What are my emotions telling me? Uh, what is my body telling me? Uh, you're probably familiar with proprioception, awareness of your body in motion, um, and, and all these other aspects that most of us don't think about. Uh, we're, we're too much in our head. And so my invitation to you is to begin to reflect on how have you been this student and then master of transformation from the entrepreneurial world to the, uh, to the yoga world, to the coaching world? What are the golden threads in your story? And we'll take time to draw them out. I won't try and do that right now. But then come and teach us that. I love that. Yeah. Because as you know, we've had this conversation. That's been a lot for me to sort through. Of yeah. I, I am very visceral and, and have everything coming at me and feeling everything. And it's, it's really taken some work mm. uh, and, and presence, like true presence and consciousness to stay with that and to decipher what's mine, what's not mine. And then what to, you know, how to elevate up to the next, you know, soul vibration to get out from that lower vibration stuff. Because working with the masses for so many years, as I've told you, and, you know, it's like, man, you're in the swamp. And, it, you know, it, there comes a time where uh, we have to elevate up above that to a, an energetic vibration that gets into a, a higher place so that our thinking stays clearly, our heart stays clear, our intentions stay clear, and we really know why we're doing what we're doing. So do you have any of your oracle cards in front of you? I can grab one really fast. Well, well, I've got some in front of me, so let's use this just to save time. So at okay. the start of every call I have with Patty, when we realize that Patty is not, doesn't need the uh, logic or information to tap into insights, uh, this is, just happens to be the pack of cards that got in front of me, the spirit cards. Um, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna pick them up. I'm gonna rough. <laughs> I love this. Them and, <laughs> I love seeing and, you do this. <laughs> tell me when to stop. And and uh, well, I'll, wait I'll, for have the to, John. I'll open them up. And I'll shuffle, move my finger along. Just okay, shuffle them and let one you shuffle the cards and a, let one jump out. Usually one will just pop out. Okay. Go for the jumpers. They're the best. Okay. Well, here's the one. I'll hold it up so you can read it. It says medicine woman. <laughs> Nurturing, healing, and restoration. Now if oh my God. Yeah. Uh, I think this podcast episode is complete right now. And I want to resist the urge to explain for everyone who's listening what yeah. that means. Because I know this landed for you. Totally. And that's the key for you and what's coming next in life. Like my friend who says, I'm only interested in two things, sex and God. <laughs> and then the right person shows up. Your people will get you. Your people will feel you. And that's the game you're on. This was perfection. Thanks, Patty. Thanks, Rich. So good to see you. For most of human history, it wasn't called coaching. It was called leadership. And it's what I love to do, to coach people, to lead people, and to mess with people's thinking. If you'd like more of this, or if you'd like to learn more about our community, of extraordinary top performers, go to richlitvin.com forward slash one insight.